Florence Simon spent a lot of time chatting up friends and family on the porch of her North St. Clair Street home. She'd lived on that street her entire life. She knew everybody on the street. Her nephew, Ronald Pasikoff, remembers the last words his Aunt Flo ever said to him. And I said to her, you know, Aunt Flo, I can get you out of this neighborhood if you want to move. And her last words were to me were, everybody loves me here. But one person saw her as a target. I know this is difficult, but 1994, um, do you remember finding out that this terrible thing had happened? I found her. A friend of hers called me the night before and said, we, ca we can't find your aunt. So I thought she might be visiting you know, one of my uncles or somewhere in Squirrel Hill that she had stayed overnight. So then the next day, I had a key to her, her house. I, uh, I went there and opened the door and, and found her. Pasikov says his Aunt Flo's body lay on the hallway floor, her apron pulled up over her head. He called police. But after about a week, they just, they just didn't have any leads to go on. And that's, I'm sure that's frustrating for all of you. Oh, sure. It was, it was you know, you know, to have something like that happen and then feel that there's no closure on it is, is something that has been with our family since it happened. Fast forward to February 2023 when city police let Pittsburgh know they're not letting go of cold cases. This victim's former dentist uh, heard about the cold case squad starting up again and wanted me to take a look at the case again. So uh, I start off when we get a phone call or I start looking into these cases, we pull, we pull a file out just like this um, and uh, I start reading. Homicide detective George Sattler is the cold case investigator. He's had some recent breakthroughs. There was a fingerprint when they processed the scene back in 1994. There was a fingerprint that had never been identified on the weapon that was used to beat the woman before she was strangled with her own bra in her own home, an elderly woman. This one inch piece of evidence harvested from the murder scene 30 years ago was still sitting in Florence Simon's case file. The game changer came in 2022 with a new fingerprinting system. In the old days, some of our prints would not go into the system because they were poor. They were identifiable, but not searchable. Now with the algorithms and the technology, this system is, it's lights out. It is helping us solve a lot more crimes. And at the point is with a lot less quality and quantity as well. It's just a very, very good system. Remember, 30 years ago, Pittsburgh police lifted the print from a knickknack the killer used to hit Mrs. Simon on the head with. So um, I got excited that I knew there was this new technology that our fingerprint experts, so I brought it down to our guys and they were able to identify a suspect from that fingerprint. Detective Sattler found the person matching that fingerprint. Which made it huge. Police have the job of gathering evidence and then telling the district attorney who they think the killer is and why. It's up to the DA to actually file charges and issue an arrest warrant for the murder suspect. So I had typed up an affidavit and I, I submitted it to the district attorney's office and it's being evaluated as we speak, which I'm hoping, fingers crossed, uh, they give us a warrant for this individual. I asked Allegheny County District Attorney Stephen Zapala if he plans to issue the arrest warrant police asked for. So there's this fingerprint that... Um, that would not have been determined uh, but for the efforts of the cold case detectives, which is great. It's a movement in the right direction. So these guys have taken these particular cases and they think they can solve them. I know we had talked off camera about DNA. Mm -hmm. You know how I feel about that type of evidence. If it was conclusive, then we'd be charging people right now. Detective Sattler tells me DNA was recently identified in another murder. July of 2013, someone shot 30-year-old Samantha Poe in the head four times. The body of the young mother found on Hallam Street in Homewood. Ms. Poe wasn't just shot. She was abducted and tortured and then killed. Those aggravating circumstances could make this a death penalty case. Just like fingerprints, the computer science behind searching DNA databases is exponentially more sophisticated than it was just a few years ago. Detective Sattler says the attackers used duct tape to bind her. You believe you know who killed Samantha? Yes, we know, we know who killed her. We know who one of the people involved, put it that way. We think there were multiple people. 
we know one of the individuals involved in that, yes. And that person? His DNA is on that duct tape. There's DNA on the duct tape. So is that enough to bring no. charges? Mm -mm. No, it's not. It's not certainly not conclusive, but it's, it's another piece of evidence. So again, the case is moving in a, it's actually moving in the right direction when it's been sitting for so long. Police officers leverage that cutting edge technology along with tried and true evidence collection techniques and witness accounts to request an arrest warrant on cold cases they say are solved, like the murders of two different Pittsburgh women whose families want to see their killers caught. I have a number of cousins that I keep in touch with that, that you know, again, new inflow, loved inflow. And I think every one of them is, is, is hoping that there will be closure to this case uh, as soon as possible. So, you know, if, if the evidence is overwhelming and that they think they have the person, naturally, we would like to, to see that that comes to conclusion. You, you, you and I have been doing this, doing this together for a long time. Um, this is something that uh, don't, we can't give up. And I think that uh, the detectives with the city have, have clearly sent that message. And so if there's any consolation to these families, we're not there yet, but you know, these guys are working it and they're not going to give up. And neither will my guys. Detective Sattler tells me Florence Simon's killer has gotten away with murder for 30 years. Samantha Poe's killers almost 11 years. DA Zapala told me he will take a deep dive into the evidence in these murders to determine if he will prosecute. If he doesn't, he says he's open to partnering with the state attorney general or the U.S. attorney to make way for another agency to help get the killers behind bars for good. I'm Shannon Perrine, Pittsburgh's Action News 4.